Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Well, well I don't even know how to start this video. Uh, Arm has sued Qualcomm. Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So the reason of course this is so shocking is that Arm and Qualcomm are long-term strategic partners. Uh, the Snapdragon processors use Arm's uh, CPUs in them, for example. So to try to understand what's going on here, why these long-term partners are now uh, having this problem, I'm going to look at this in five different uh, phases. First of all, what does it mean for the Snapdragon processors? Secondly, what is ARM's business model? So how exactly does it react and interact with companies like uh, Qualcomm? Thirdly, the timeline of what's happened as laid out in the, in the suit that's been filed. Uh, what is ARM's complaint against uh, Qualcomm? And finally, what is Qualcomm's response? So first of all, what does it mean for the Snapdragon processors? Well, absolutely nothing. Everything will remain here exactly as it is. We're expecting uh, the new Snapdragon process to be announced at the Snapdragon conference, which is happening uh, summit, the Snapdragon summit, which is happening in a few weeks from now. We're expecting the ARM X3 and the A715 to feature in that processor. So in terms of next year's smartphones, next year's Galaxy, next year's OnePlus, whatever, uh, nothing really is going to change. This is all about a particular type of chip, which is called the Nuvia-based CPU that Qualcomm want to use in laptops and maybe even move up into the server market. So it's not the stuff that we're seeing in the smartphones. Okay, so the second thing we need to look at is what is ARM's business model? Now this is important because ARM doesn't make any chips. You can't go and buy an ARM processor for your uh, for your smartphone, for your laptop, you, you have partners. So for example, you have Qualcomm, you have Samsung, you have MediaTek in the mobile space. They make processors using ARM's designs up in the server. And the Neoverse, you've got kind of Ampere Computing, for example, who make those chips. So ARM don't make chips themselves. They license their designs to other companies. So there's a bunch of engineers at ARM. They work hard designing a CPU. It's going to be this much power. You can give us this much performance, this much floating point, and there's all that stuff. And they design it, and they and then they have partners like Qualcomm, and then take those designs and incorporate them into actual chips that then get sold to companies like Samsung or OnePlus, who then put them in their smartphones. So ARM has a licensing agreement with Qualcomm and with other companies, and there are two types of licensing agreement. One is a technology license agreement. That basically means when the latest Cortex X3 comes out or the latest Cortex A715, if they've got the right agreement with ARM, they can just take that and put that in their next chip that they're designing. They can't design their own ARM chip, but they can take chips from ARM. And the other type of license is called an architecture license or an architectural license. And this basically allows companies to design their own clean room, clean sheet ARM processors that are 100% compatible. And there's a validation process that goes on to make sure they're compatible, but they don't actually take anything that ARM's engineers have designed, although they do have lots of access to ARM's engineers who provide tailored, individualized support for people who are trying to design an ARM compatible processor. So they can get access to all those engineers who can tell them about the different nuances of how the architecture works, uh, what happens in this situation, what happens if this interrupt happens here, or I write to this register here, they get to talk of all that kind of stuff because they want to design a chip that's 100% compatible. And that's what Apple does, for example. Apple designs its chips, the ones you find in the iPhones, you want to find in the new Macs. And during the design phase, there's a validation process in which they submit some results or they, you know, and they come back and forth, does this fit? Does this make it 100% compatible? And it has to be because ARM need to protect uh, the instruction ISO set, instruction set, the ISO it's called, the instruction set architecture, so that uh, you get it always compatible. You get a diversion of forking going off in a different direction. Now, Nuvia is a company that was started by some ex Apple and Google employees. I've covered them a couple of times here on this channel. Do check out those videos if you're interested. And they basically got hold of an ARM V9 architectural license way back in September 2019. So this leads us on into part three, which is the timeline, what's going on. So in September of 2019, ARM granted Nuvia an architectural license, as well as actually a technology license, giving them the right to design their own custom processor cores based on the ARM architecture. 
And then from September 2019 to early 2021, Nuvi used that technology it licensed from ARM to design and develop its own processor cores. In fact, during August of 2020, Nuvra announced its first generation codenamed Phoenix, which would be a custom core based on the ARM architecture that had the potential to reset the bar for the server market. So here you've got this company called Nuvia, started up by some ex-Apple and uh, Google employees. They're designing an ARM, custom ARM chip for the server market. And then in January 2021, Qualcomm announced it was buying Nuvia for $1.4 billion. And I've got videos about that here on this channel. Now, soon after that, uh, ARM wrote to Qualcomm and said, oh, by the way, you do remember that you don't automatically get the licenses that Nuvia own when you buy it. And from that moment onwards, they entered into a whole year of negotiation. Qualcomm and ARM about what it means for them to take over Nuvia's architectural license. Now, unfortunately, after a year of negotiation, they were unable to agree on terms. This meant that in 2022, ARM had to officially write a letter to Qualcomm and say, we are terminating Nuvia's architectural license under the conditions that they had already established uh, and it is no longer valid and you are not allowed to use any of the technology that's been developed under Nuvia's license inside of Qualcomm because they couldn't come to terms on how that license would be taken over. Now, the key point in all of this is that when one company buys another one, even if the first company, Qualcomm in this case, has architectural licenses from ARM, you don't automatically get the right to have the architectural license of the company you're buying. That's the bottom line. So if Nuvia had an ARM v9 architectural license and Qualcomm had an ARM v9 architectural license, they don't have the right to take over Nuvia's architectural license just by the fact that they've bought it. And this is all written into that license agreement. Now, just after ARM wrote to Qualcomm and said, we're terminating the Nuvia architectural license, Qualcomm submitted a CPU, the Nuvia CPU to ARM to be verified that it was 100% compatible with the ARM v9 architecture. We don't know the results of that, but let's assume that it came back as true. Then the Nuvia license was cancelled. After the cancellation, about a month went past and Qualcomm officially recognised that the license had been cancelled and sent a certificate of termination to ARM to verify that they have cancelled that, uh, that license. And then one more time, ARM wrote to Qualcomm and said, just to remind you, because you no longer have the Nuvia license, you're not allowed to develop anything that was developed under the Nuvia company, under their license. If you want to carry on with those engineers, you have to start again, or should have already started again, under Qualcomm's license. And this is all legal stuff, you know, what right you have and what right you don't have, but this is the case that ARM are putting forward. Now, just two weeks after that, letter reminding Qualcomm that they can't use technology developed under Nuvia's architectural license, they submitted another CPU for verification, not explaining where it came from, not explaining its origins, uh, but they said, here's a CPU we want you to verify that it is ARM compatible and we're allowed to sell it as an ARM compatible processor. Now, ARM's argument is basically this, two weeks, you can't develop a new CPU in two weeks, that they're actually using the same Nuvia CPU that they had all along, uh, even though their license has now been revoked. And I'm also arguing that in June of 2022, Qualcomm have still been talking about how they're going to be shipping Nuvia-based CPUs into the laptop market, even though at that point, the uh, license had been terminated. Even at that point, uh, Armour told them they're not allowed to use Nuvia-based CPUs. Even at that point, they have said, well, we've got this new CPU we want you to verify without specifying where it came from, but yet in public saying, we've got Nuvia-based uh, CPUs that we want to ship. And so that's basically the timeline. We've got Nuvia starting up as a company, gets an architectural license, Qualcomm buys Nuvia, Arm um, points out to Qualcomm that it has to come to new terms with it over the architectural license that Nuvia owned. They didn't come to terms. Arm said, well, you can't use that license anymore. Qualcomm seemed to be still using that license. And that's where we're at now, right now. So what is Arm's complaint? Well, Arm's complaint is this. First of all, it doesn't grant very many architectural licenses. Apple has one, we know that. Nuvia had one, Qualcomm had one. And it says that when it grants those architectural licenses, the license fees and the royalties are relative to the expectations of the products that are going to be sold. 
What do you mean by that? So if they know Nuvra is uh, selling server chips, then they may have a figure in their mind. They're going to sell 100,000 of them or something like that, and they're going to have this kind of price point, and therefore 5% of that, or 2% of that, or whatever the numbers are they use, will mean we'll get this kind of royalty. So there's a calculation based on the company that's asking, the product they're making, and what uh, what the expectations of sales are. And then they enter into an agreement, and then ARM offer them personalized, individualized support, helping them design this processor that is 100% ARM compatible. But of course, our Nuvia selling server chips is very different to Qualcomm selling laptop chips. Laptops is a much bigger market, consumer market. The margins are different. The how much they're going to charge for each one. That means the royalties fees are going to be probably different. The number of units sold is going to be different. So part of that renegotiation would be, well, that was Nuvia selling server chips. Now you're Qualcomm selling laptop chips. These are two different markets, two different types of companies. Now let's go back and look at this. Uh, license agreement that you've inherited from Nuvia, but you have to come to new terms with us, and they obviously weren't able to come to terms. And I'm also uh, saying that because they've now submitted another CPU for validation, and that CPU uh, is using an ARM V9, we're assuming, where did it come from? Where did this CPU suddenly appear from if, uh, if it's based on Nuvia technology, which was uh, developed when Nuvia was an independent company and ARM were talking to Nuvia and giving them all this support and giving them all this intellectual property and giving them all this uh, stuff to help them develop it. Well, they're not Qualcomm legally, and this is about legally, are not allowed to use that one, but they still submit a new CPU for verification. Well, where did that CPU come from? Surely ARM are saying this is Nuvia's CPU in, in just with a different badge on it. So after one year of trying to actually come to an agreement, they were unable to do that. Now, why is ARM being taking this strong stance? Well, the problem is, is that ARM is the owner of the ARM architecture. And for an ARM chip to be released with an architectural license, it has to be proved to be 100% compatible. And that protects the architecture. It protects what the instructions do. It protects how the chip behaves. It protects when you write a compiler, when you write a piece of software, that it will work on that kind of processor. Now, if another company tries to make an ARM-based chip and it's not got the right licenses to do that, which therefore means it can't be validated down that path, then now you've got someone who's using a uh, an unvalidated and unauthorized ARM CPU. And ARM are saying, well, we can't have that. This, this, you can't have just somebody making their own CPU and claiming that it's ARM compatible without actually having a license from us or without actually having it validated. Of course, Qualcomm have a response. I did email Qualcomm and ask them for a reply. They sent me a quote, which when I Googled it has been given to absolutely everybody. So this is the quote they sent me. ARM's lawsuit marks an unfortunate departure from its long-standing successful relationship with Qualcomm. ARM has no right, contractual or otherwise, to attempt to interfere with Qualcomm or Nuvia's innovations. ARM's complaint ignores the fact that Qualcomm has broad, well-established license rights covering its custom-designed CPUs, and we are confident those rights will be affirmed. So what it basically all boils down to this, Qualcomm is saying, well, we've already got an architectural license. We bought another company with an architectural license. We brought in their stuff uh, in-house. We're carrying on working on that under our architectural license. What's the big issue? They had a license, we've got a license, everyone's got a license. We're all licensed. There's a lot of licenses everywhere. What's the problem? We've, we've, we're just carrying on with what they were doing. What ARM is saying is, well, that's what you think, but the license agreement says when you transfer that license from Nuvi to Qualcomm, you have to renegotiate the contract, you have to come to terms for that. And if you can't come to terms, the work that was performed under that original license outside of Qualcomm is invalid and can't be brought in-house into Qualcomm. That's their basic argument. So you can see why we need a judge now, a judge to look at the legalese, the fine print of these, uh, of these um, licenses to find out uh, who's right. As I said, that key paragraph in the suit is that just because a purchaser of another company, in this case Qualcomm, already has a license, that doesn't necessarily mean that license from the from the company that's buying can be transferred and all the technology and the work that it's done. Qualcomm thinks it does, ARM says it doesn't, and here we are, we're uh, waiting for a court case to decide who's right and who's wrong. Okay, now of course there's lots of unanswered questions which we don't know the answers to. Now, if this goes 
forward as a court case. There's going to be discovery, there's going to be you know, a trial, there's going to be witnesses, there's going to be emails that are going to be read out. And so we're going to get to see what was going on both at Arm and at Qualcomm during the, and at Nuvia during this time of the uh, purchase of uh, Nuvia. It would be nice if they came to an out of court settlement and this whole thing just got shut down and forgotten about as a, a bad episode. Do tell me in the comments below what you think. Who's right, who's wrong? Is it difficult to know at this point without all the, without any more details? I'll be interested to hear what you have to say. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos about tech, about smartphones, about processors, about ARM, about Qualcomm, Samsung, MediaTek, if you like these kind of videos, then please do subscribe to the channel. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.